Water is flowing into the city's water treatment plant from two pipelines. And it's being successfully treated for drinking water. This has allowed the city to lift partial restrictions on residents and businesses. But the water worries are far from over. A few local citizens set up at City Hall to express their concerns. There's so much greed here. Um, we're so focused on getting oil, getting the next resource out of the ground, and at the cost of destroying our natural habitat, we're destroying water. And they're just out there for money, so yeah, we can't drink money. We need to save our water. Saskatchewan's premier was also at City Hall to meet with municipal leaders. He says provincial officials are investigating what caused the break in the pipeline and that Husky Energy will bear the costs. We're going to find out exactly what happened here. Uh, we're going to do our own investigation. Uh, there will be accountability as a part of that for, uh, for, uh, for the company and for, for government. Everything will be transparent. Water samples commissioned by Husky Energy were taken at 60 locations from Maidstone to Prince Albert. Only five samples contained hydrocarbons in amounts that exceeded Canadian drinking water standards. And this was around the spill site. Shelley Essence from Prince Albert raised questions about oil in the sediment and wonders what the long-term effects will be. There's not going to be enough monitoring to actually um, be able to determine the safe levels of oil in the water for us to consume. At one point, you know, at what point can we turn on that intake um, valve again? Um, and also, so that's for the short term, but also in the long term, what would be the effects of the fish, the wildlife, the plants, uh, us? These retention ponds were set to be decommissioned by the city, but they're now back in use holding water from the pipelines. Water is being pumped from the Little Red River. The other line is from the South Saskatchewan over 30 kilometers away. But the city says it needs to find a permanent source of water before winter. Depending on the outcome of the risk, man risk assessment work being done with, in conjunction with the Ministry of Environment, uh, they'll hope to find uh, solutions that either either are either we can access the North Saskatchewan River as is or with some sort of pretreatment process ahead of that. I think that would probably be our, the city's best bet. De Silva has researched the topic and says currently in Canada there is no technology in use by municipalities that can remove hydrocarbons from drinking water. That's going to be the challenge is we know there are technologies that can remove hydrocarbons, but we don't know what we should be expecting on the river yet. So if you don't know the concentrations that you'll be getting at the intake, then it's, it's hard to size a technology appropriately to, to, produce, to, to be assured, assured that you would clean, produce clean water. Water restrictions have lifted from car washes, laundry mats and dry cleaners. Kinsman Water Park remains closed for the time being. Residents can water lawns and fill pools and fountains on designated days. However, if there is an equipment failure, the city may change the water guidelines. For GO, I'm Lisa Rizzo.